The views and opinions of this program are those of the host guests and callers. There is substantial risk of loss in trading futures and options, which you should carefully consider prior to trading. For over 95 years, we've set the bar. Power, we restored it. Protection, we reinvented it. Record yields, we redefined it. If there's one thing we know at FS, it's that just because something hasn't been done, doesn't mean it can't be done. We're never satisfied unless we take your farming operation to the next level. Run your equipment at peak efficiency and bust the bins this season. Visit fssystem.com. And joining us now here on Market Talk as we broadcast live from the 80th Annual National Association of Farm Broadcasting Convention in Kansas City, Missouri, Tommy Grisafi with Advanced Trading is with us. Tommy, it's good to see you, buddy. How are you? Jesse, I'm used to being 600 miles away from you. We are sitting right <laughs> next to each other. So, we uh, are. We are. It's good to see you in person and uh, get to sit down and chat a little bit and talk about what's going on in these uh, markets. And, uh, you know, midweek, a little quieter than the start of the week in the grains. Um, we'll leak it a little bit here, Wednesday's trade. You know, a lot of volatility coming back in here. It sounds like plenty of this uh, soybean lead rallies tied to the weather in South America and Brazil specifically right now, Tommy. Very much. And in, in, in the corn bulls want to get on board and say, hey, do you see beans were up 38 the other day? Let's go. And they did. That was Monday. Now we come into Wednesday. And you see corn down nine and beans are only down like eight. I mean, it's the beans have the strength. The beans have the story. Maybe corn will come along for the ride later. No matter you and I and some other smart men will be on a panel later and mm -hmm. no matter how we explain it it's hard to get rid of 2.2 billion bushels of corn when a whole new group of people in the world are now into production agriculture because we had three years at high prices and like i was telling my clients and our little talk was you just don't get people out of ag because corn broke 40 50 cents if they're mm -hmm. going to be in ag they're going to be in it so we could could get a little scary but the beans give us optimism the funds are really short corn and wheat if they go to cover that uh could be a big deal. Well, with the beans specifically, meal led rally, oil kind of joined the party earlier this week too. You know, it's still, as I've heard it explained from some weather folks, we're kind of on the tipping point for Brazil right now to where it's not something to be super concerned about. But if we get past this week and things remain hot and dry, then we really have to worry. worry. But it feels like some of the trade are already kind of pricing this in to the soy complex because we've been here before tommy right yeah uh, a friend of mine uh said it well it's like a nasa launch you know we're gonna go on this day uh, we can wait but pretty soon we're gonna get that go or no go and then you're gonna see some of those acres switch to cotton and it could delay the corn mm -hmm. another friend said something that i really liked he said never bet against it not raining in the rainforest all summer and <laughs> in their summer <laughs> and that is true when they they have dry seasons wet seasons it's it's very odd how one part's so wet one part so dry course you and i aren't weathermen but we do we do watch these markets react and farmers mm -hmm. they want us to be able to tell them what the weather's going to do before it does it and i'm of the mindset that we're going to grow a crop it might not be the best crop look what happened this year i, mean, I spent a lot of time in the state of iowa this summer it was hot it was miserable a few days a few weeks we still grew an okay crop the state of iowa's numbers were down compared to others but other parts of the country grew a crop so, yes, there's a pretty big problem in Brazil, but it, Brazil's growing area is expanding every year. Argentina's planting more. Brazil's planting more. And uh, if those other areas could have the yield, that'll make up for it. Looking at the corn market specifically, we know soybeans have a better story right now, a little more bullish optimism there. Beans have kind of, it feels like, been trying to pull corn along. Looked like we had a key reversal on the DEES chart start of the week, but now we're giving some of that back midweek corn we just we got a lot of corn out there and one has to wonder how much beans can realistically pull this corn market higher here tommy right so the november futures are coming off the board they're done and we had november options go off you know weeks ago now we have december options coming off in nine days so december corn corn futures trade more futures and options than any other grain corn trades the most beans trade a lot and then there's three different wheats. You know, they all trade a little bit, but if you add them up, it's a lot. But nothing trades volume like corn. So the fact we have a December option, December grain option expiration in nine days is a big deal. Remember a few weeks ago, we went up to 510. I think it was like three Thursdays ago. 
or 509. Mm -hmm. And it felt like that's it. You know, lows are in, we're going. Then we turned around and went all the way to new lows. With it, relief rally this week. Now we're, you and I are counting on our fingers. How many cents are we from new lows? We're a lot closer (laughs) to new lows than breaking above five. And as all these options come in and out of the money, these strikes, we call them strikes. You have your futures, which are trading, say, 470. But there is a ton of open interest at the 460, 450 put. There's a ton of open interest at five. And as we gravitate towards these numbers, we accelerate. My fear is that we accelerate down to 450 in the next 10 days. So as a producer, how do we manage some of this risk right now in the gray markets with the potential for all of this volatility coming up as we near the holidays? Great question. One thing, if you are a farmer and you put corn in a, a truck and brought it to the elevator and priced it off a dease where it's sitting there like the elevator has your grain, you're going to need to price that grain or they're going to ask you to roll. And there's big carries in the market, but they'll have to pay to roll that into that carry. If the grain's in your bin, there's big carry in the market, but they're not going to capture any of that carry without making the sale. So to your point, sales are going to have to be made, even if you don't like the prices. If you delivered that grain to the elevator, if you don't want to price it out, you're going to have to pay for that right not to price it out. We recommend selling some of that grain and buying it back in Chicago, whether it be a future, an option, or a spread or something. But uh, big decision making. Before I came down here, I talked to several large clients. They're like, you know, they, they're not happy corn's down a dime. They, mm-hmm. And they have the bushels. You talk to a North Dakota farmer who has big bushels, and now he's bummed out that we're 425 cash corn. They, they were hoping to have 550 cash corn in big bushels. It's hard to get the two, Jess. It's hard to have big, big bushels across America and then have the price. We're talking today with Tommy Grisafi from Advanced Trading. Uh, Tommy, let's talk a little bit about uh, the economy. We're getting plenty of inflation data here this week, and I always like to get your perspective on on where things stand in the outside markets. That tends to drive a lot of our ag commodities here. Uh, you know, we saw the Fed. They paused on interest rates here a couple weeks ago, but I don't know. I still got this uneasy feeling in in the pit of my stomach about, the health of our overall economy and as you see some of the cpi numbers and more come out this week i mean what's your thoughts as far as what is going on with the outside markets right now tommy great question you had cpi ppi manufacturing called empire manufacturing jay powell's doing his job jay powell and the boys said we're going to raise rates we're going to cool inflation and they are cooling inflation more than we had thought so the stock market says hey Mm -hmm. This is great. No more uh, raising interest rates. Let's explode up. We're having our Christmas rally, our year-end rally a little earlier. And for all the people running around saying that the world's ending, the stock market's going to crash, the Dow, I think, is up like 700 on the week. That's not Mm -hmm. what a crash looks like. You're old enough to know that. (laughs) If I said the Dow Jones is down 2,500 today, that would be the start of a crash. Mm -hmm. Up 150 after being up 6, 700 last few days is not a crash. Which brings me to your point. Okay, so we got interest rate, we got inflation a little bit tamed, and it looks like the Fed's going to take its foot off the pedal, and then the stock market explodes, which will just create more, uh, not inflation, well, it's not a slowing sign. A slowing sign is, you know, stocks going sideways, unemployment taming. I, I, I feel like we could have another wave, like everyone in the house gets sick. You get everyone fixed, and then another kid comes from home from school sick, and they get it again. That's what inflation can keep doing. we got to keep an eye out for that. And I know the dollar has uh, backed off a little bit this week. Yeah, at least it did, I know, on, on Tuesday. Um, obviously, a, a cheaper dollar would help with some of our exports in the grain and livestock commodities. But I know that that's a whole other piece as to what's going on with the inflation play as well, Tommy. Yeah, that's a big picture piece. When I was younger, I used to stare at that dollar. When mm-hmm. I was younger, trading in the corn pit, the board of trade, we used to stare at the Japanese yen. It's not something we talk about so much anymore. People are going to buy and consume what they need. There is a time when the dollar gets weaker and they can buy more for less. And interesting enough, we had okay exports throughout the years with the higher dollar. Like I feel the dollar's a little mm-hmm. higher right now around that 107, 108 level lately. Call it 105 for simple math. Uh, I feel like exports are good when the dollar's 90. We're nowhere near that level. So the dollar's been a little higher, but we're still doing okay. We do need some more exports. And of course, today, Mm -hmm. I don't know if you saw that, there was a mix-up with the USDA. First, they said Mexico bought corn. Then they said Japan. Then they switched it. Anyway, I guess it was Japan (laughs) bought corn. When corn's down 10 cents like it is today, we could expect to see more sales. Nothing Mm -hmm. 
will help get rid of this corn like lower prices. Of course, no one watching this wants to hear that. I know. You got to go down to find some of that demand, but folks don't want to hear that. That's Having sure. a hard time selling your house? Drop the price. Exactly. Exactly. That's a great way to put it. Uh, crude oil, too. I know crude has backed off quite a bit. Now we're, we're starting to maybe... Uh, it feels like we found some near-term support to bounce off of in crude oil. What, what's your thoughts on the crude side of things? Yeah, I, I was really excited when it was at 95. I thought it was a value when it was 75. When crude went to 75, I texted clients, you know, don't do the futures or options. Just call your fuel guy. Like, we just broke $20 in crude. I know you guys need to spend some money for the year end. If you want to buy a few loads of crude, I'd much rather do it at 75 than mm-hmm. 95. We've since bounced a little. It, it feels like it's just choppy range. I did see yeah. a headline come out of D.C. saying that the Biden administration does want to fill the strategic reserve. But I didn't see him say the government bought this much oil. Sure. Anything. And it gets a little tricky how that and, works. And to be fair, we've heard that same song and dance before. And then we didn't fill it when it was down in the upper 60s. So I guess I wait and see on that one, I would think, Tommy. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I, I'm very nervous with this Israel. I'm nervous for the world, not me personally sleeping like a baby at night but i'm nervous for the world with what's happening with israel gaza we've forgotten about ukraine i think mm-hmm. heated up over the last few days uh yeah the uh israel gaza is really taken away from ukraine not that we need to sit around and watch news and the world's ending but it's not bearish crude oil sure. all these things happening one bomb goes off the wrong place and crude could be up 20 dollars in a day just want to ask you livestock real quick, too, before we wrap up, especially cattle. We got another cattle on feed report coming Friday. The pre-report estimates are, are leaning a, a little heavy on the placements once again. Same thing we saw in October that really took a chunk out of this cattle market. Are you concerned heading into that report that we could have another leg lower in cattle if we get another bearish report? Yeah, we couldn't. And we've done a nice job the last few days building that base, starting to come back, say we're have about a third of that big break back one bad report and it's off to the races we're going to close on a friday have to trade that those numbers on monday the cattle guy has to be nervous this should have rattled them of course it's never been more expensive Mm -hmm. to produce a pound of beef with interest rates as high as they are so the cattlemen only thing we could say about the cattlemen is corn's cheaper but i don't think they want to hear that because they made good money with higher (laughs) corn right they did they did tommy uh before we let you go any other final thoughts anything else you'd mention or reiterate to folks today No, it's fun to be here. Real proud of you as one of the young members of the National Association of Farm Broadcasters. You're definitely a leader in stepping up. And I am just honored and happy to be here. This is a real neat event. I think people should uh, come out next year. Yeah, it is a great, uh, great event. And it's always good to catch up with folks in person and have conversations like the one we just had with Tommy Grisapi from Advanced Trading. Tommy, always good to catch up with you, my friend. Thanks so much. And we'll talk to you soon. Thanks, buddy.